Good morning, everybody, or afternoon for some people. We are here live at the Grovey, and I'm here with Michael Kanata. Hi, Ruby Lane. Hi, Rachel. Hello. We are so excited again for day two of our doll extravaganza here at the Grovian for our February doll talk series. And we are going to see Emily and we've been calling her dreamily Emily and there's a lot of reasons why she is so dreamy. Can you tell us about well, her? Well, thank you, but you know what, it's day three. Oh, <laughs> you know, the day is just, that is, it is true. We had Rose it's, the first day, yesterday day we three. had a full series of seminars and today's day three. Today's day three. Well. Well, I'm, I'm excited. We are having fun. And 99.9% um, .9 of the items in the Grovian belong to the Grovian. Um, there are a couple of things that are on loan to us. And what's very interesting is one of our, our uh, friends in the United Kingdom uh, who's followed the what we do, yeah, emailed us and said, I'm gonna send you my hooray to come and vacation with all of you. <laughs> and we said, sure, send it's her on down. It's a great place to vacation, let me tell you. Uh, and she could be <laughs> with the other girls. But here we, today I'm, we're sharing Emily with you. And Emily is on loan, uh, but she's soon going to be going back to her, her, her owner, which is Denise Bisi. And uh, those of you who do not know Denise Bisi, she's a, um, a um, award-winning, uh, doll costumer, instructor, lecturer, author, former editor of Doll News. And she loaned us Emily. And Emily's been here for a while, so it's time for her to go bye-bye, uh, go back <laughs> home. Um, Denise would have been with us today, except that she's preparing for a sewing workshop that she's conducting here in a month, so she's getting all the things ready. So she said, please share Emily with the audience. So I'm going to introduce you to Emily. And she is. There's Emily. And Emily is the first generation China Hure on her original gutta percha body. And she is just, I think she's a beauty. And she's got those big, big Hure eyes mm -hmm. that they're known for. And really, my favorite kind of lips when you. Um, for a hearing, which she's got, you know, very full lips in a kind of russet color. Um, and a wonderful kid, kid skin wig. And a kid skin wig, and which is her original wig, by the way. You can see the little, how it's just. We're getting up real right. close so our doll people can just see Absolutely. the detailing on her eyes. It's just phenomenal. And she's a wonderful doll. And, you know, it's a, it's a great thing to have the doll still on its original body. Most of them are not. Most of them are not. Speaking of the body, how often do you find a Hure on the original Gutta Percha it's body? It's probably one out of 50 that, yeah. sh that come onto the marketplace. There's, um, they calculate that in when they were producing these dolls that they never produced more than 1,200 dolls per year. Mm. So that's, that's not that's that not many very dolls. Many at all, no. no, that's not very, and they were expensive and they're expensive because the actual material gutta percha was an expensive material. It's basically like our, what we would call rubber. rubber. Mm -hmm. It was a rubberized material, but it came uh, from a, a tree in Malaysia. So it was very prized. It was used for many, many other things. And we've done other presentations with uh, Ruby Lane, which you could go back and refer to those and they'll go uh, tell you more about that because we don't want to be redundant. We don't want to be redundant because we have all of these gorgeous clothes to, to look talk at. about. Yes. Yes. And this is a wonderful um, uh, selection of clothes. And most of the pieces are marked. But I want you to look at this little, this is a cotton dress with a silk check um, ribbon decoration. But look at the, um, the, 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 the cherry decoration that it has. And this is just such an incredibly a... sweet print. And this is one that I have never seen before. So this is really the only one of this type that I have seen this at, with this fabric. It's an absolute dream. These sleeves, the color, the print, it is and, phenomenal. And what's interesting too, these little, these little um, um, short sleeves, when you have the one piece, um, 
gutta percha body, which is the first body, you can wear this because there's no jointing to get in the way of, uh, to, to ruin mm, the look. Mm -hmm. So the arm is lovely, has beautiful articulation, so you can really see that. It's just so wonderful. And this is a fabric too, I think that just about any costume would, would give their, their eye teeth to have. Just a super piece. And then this is another classic Hure piece, but look again, look at the beautiful print and the flounces. It's all hand sewn, although Hure clothes can be both, but this one is hand sewn. And then the little classic Hure ruching. But look at how they use the stripes. And look at this joining here, Rachel. Show them that, how they connected the stripe Mm -hmm. to the sleeve. You can always tell good quality that, workmanship yeah, when the stripes yeah. match up. Yeah, and they, and they match up. It's not, that wasn't an accident. It matches up over here also. Right. And then, right. you know, and then the, the, the stripes coming uh, horizontal is kind of very interesting. Because in, in the case of these dolls, you know, if a, a person would not want to have horizontal stripes because it make them look slightly chubby. But these were girls, mm -hmm. and they, the preteens, and um, you wanted them to be healthy, to have right. a nice, you know, healthiness. That was the look, absolutely. And this is another outfit that I want you to show the audience, because it's just, again, it's so absolutely simple. It's simple with very little ornamentation, but just a beautiful uh, fringed, um, decoration and a, a, a two-tiered skirt and this is attached sometimes the second um over skirt wouldn't wouldn't be attached but it's again just beautiful workmanship what a wonderful fashion what is what is this oh that is a jump rope it's a jump rope mm -hmm. how fun is yeah. that yeah so it's a jump rope so you know she Aww. could wear her little silk dress and then go skip down the street did all of these wonderful things come with her originally? Yes, is this yes. All her? Okay, so yes. everything. I think Denise has added a couple of things. Here because, and there. Let's face it, it would be irresistible to not um, add something to it. That's uh, But I, I believe she has an inventory of what was originally with the doll. Mm -hmm. So that at that some point, if it, you know, you could remove the things that didn't come with them. But let's be realistic. Here is our, the great, 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 great grandmother of Barbie. So it's not unlike Barbie, where you would go and you'd buy uh, ready-to-wear clothes to add to it, and you would buy things at different shops. It didn't all come from the Hire shop. It, it you know, it would be it would be irresistible if you were a little girl in 1860 uh, in Paris and you were at the um, Palais Royal and you were walking down the street and there were there was a shop that had doll things. Of course, you would buy something. If you were lucky of to be able to buy, of course you would absolutely. Yes. Yes. When he and, and that mm -hmm. that um, uh, reminds me of this beautiful chap chapeau that I know that um, Denise added to it, and that had at one point been in um, Blondinette's collection when it was all broken up and dismantled, and Denise did buy that, and it's you know unfortunately for Blondinette, it's now Emily's hat. And I don't think she has any intention of giving it up. <laughs> of giving it up. <laughs> but this is her original hat. And you've got to see this because look at what they did. They used velvet and then they, they braided it. And they did a big braid, which is actually a fabulous um, technique to um, create a decoration. And then they use blonde lace and chantilly lace, but it's a bonnet with a, uh, a capelet attached to it. So that would cover the shoulders, but so it's, beautiful. and it could be worn with this. There's actually two bonnets that could be worn with the outfit that she's wearing. And let's talk about this outfit because this is, again, the lines are very simple. It has blonde lace and chantilly lace. Basically they're the same thing. The only thing that makes blonde lace Blonde, it up so you guys can see that yeah. the blonde lace is underneath, underneath the black lace. Underneath here also. Look at that. But here's what I think is sensational is they've taken a knife pleat trim that they've lined it with lace 
then they put two, two different kinds of lace underneath it, then a ribbon running. Then they've taken the pleats and they've festooned it almost like um, a, um, you know, Watteau style. And it, it's simple, yet elegant, yet fancy. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, that certain je ne sais quoi that the French have. It transitions from day to night. It, exactly. <laughs> and then pink and black is always a classic. And that was very popular in the 1860s. When they first started uh, Hooray Dolls, I remember reading somewhere that they wanted the, do the, w the girls to make their own fashions, but the girls didn't want that, to make their own fashions. That didn't really work out. Um, um, you know, the original intention, and we actually have a published pattern f that the Hooray company was trying to get people to, to use, it, did, it didn't work out, and, and probably in two, two ways. These were very expensive dolls, which they're set, then selling them to people that uh, had the means. And the people that had the means didn't have to really economize by um, doing, doing a do-it-yourself job. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the Hure sisters also figured there's more money in the things right. than there is. I mean, if you think about it, you sell 1,200 dolls a year. And the average wardrobe would have seven changes of clothing with all the accoutrement. There is way more money in the trunk, the furniture, mm -hmm. the shoes, the dresses, the hats, than there ever would be in the... Exactly. Um, and they were criticized at the time for the price point of the dolls. Um, but you know what? This, these things provided a good living for a lot of people. If you were a stay-at-home mother, and you could do mm -hmm. do sewing, create blouses or chemises or uh, pantalettes. You know, you could, you know, have money for uh, food for your children and and Absolutely. A add it to and it was and so be good at home. for the economy, mm -hmm. and it was good for a lot of sewers. And then let me show you this piece because this is kind of classic because we're in the 1860s, and stripes were very um, um, popular. And this has got a two piece. And again, okay. classic Hure. Now this one, this was new. I feel that it was fuchsia, probably the color of the blouse that you're wearing today. Could you imagine what yes. that Yes, and like? uh, fuchsia. Well, you can really see. Yeah, it really see is it right there, there in the yeah. back. And this isn't, this wasn't, this didn't fade because somebody didn't take care of it. Uh, fuchsia just seems to uh, fade over time. And the, the, but the good news about it is it fades to a gorgeous color, mm -hmm. you know, almost a lavender. And this is another little treasure in Emily's. Uh, so she's got these two gorgeous uh, mantles, which is another word for wrap or cape, mantles. And they're both silk velvet and they're beautifully decorated with jet beads. And you really think that if she put this she could mix it with a lot of different items. A lot items. of mix and match opportunities But here's here. a fabulous classic Hure hat, and it's got the little a little bird decoration on it. But if you look and see inside of it, I'll turn it the right way, you can see that it's marked that. Hure. That's what, yeah, we can now, see Now, you want to be careful with this because there was a, a group of hats that came up on the market, and they had marks, and they were not authentic. Mm -hmm. What you really want to look at is, is the hat... And is the, the mark, do they work together? Because it's like if you see a Monet painting, you don't have to really see the signature. You should be able to see across the room that it's a Monet painting. Mm -hmm. So that's what you really want to look at. And then if you're going to put out some serious um, capital to buy a hat like this, which, by the way, it would, you know, buy it from somebody who knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that's the best right. policy for that. But this is a wonderful piece. Hure dresses, accessories, uh, things for the Hure, they are they are hard to find and there are a lot of Hure people out there that are looking for them. Yes, and and um, you know, they're very devoted to mm -hmm. it. And um, and if you have an opportunity to get you're offered something, you know, you kinda have to really go for it. Yeah, or it's gonna, swoop in. it's gonna be it's going to be um, 
uh, uh, you know, snatched up. Now, also what's interesting in the, the history of designer fashions, as we know, you know, Dior and Chanel and Charles Frederick Worth and all of those great names, they weren't the first people to create designer fashions as we know them, which is name brands. Mm -hmm. The first company that did that was the Hiray Company. And they did that because they realized that their dolls sat and, oh, well, that's not a good example. I'll get you a better example. Well, let me get you one that's really clear. Mm. Okay, so here's one that's really clear. So when the dolls was, were sitting, their shoes were up. And so if they put their name brand, which is Hire, and it's a Hire A Paris, in other words, Hire, um, Hire from Paris. Smart. This mm -hmm. was advertising. So it was a form of advertising, and it made people feel like, well, I have a Hire. Even in one of the children's publications of the time, there was a little cartoon of some fancy girls, and another girl was standing off to the side, and the two fancy girls said, we can't play with you because you don't have a Hire. So they were already a status symbol just like not on like a Louis Vuitton bag or a Chanel purse. So they had them. Um, um, now, I don't, I don't think the Hure dolls themselves are anything but sweet. You know, you yes. won't find, right. you know, they're, they're nice girls. They just happen to be wealthy and well, have gorgeous there's, clothes. Well, there's always a, um, oh, who's the one with the curls? Oh, Nellie Olson. <laughs> there's always a Nellie Olson in every yes. little group. So well, we know that, don't we? <laughs> yes. But here, here's another. Um, Those are great shoes. These are great shoes, and these are the the Mary Janes that are you know a classic uh, shoe for a hero. But Emily is, um, she's got. Let's see, she's got one, two, three, four, five pairs of shoes, and actually the ones she's wearing right now are are some of the most classic of uh, six pairs of shoes. So she's actually wealthier than any of the Grovian. Um, Hirays here. Mimi and Lucy are not amused. But mm -hmm. here's also a gorgeous pair of, you know, that midnight Glass. blue. Ooh, those are gorgeous. And, but what I love about it is it still has a price tag on it. Look at that. So that, that was really a wonderful thing. And I just love her embroidered house slippers. Oh, yes. Those and are aren't those just, cute? Those are just fabulous. Aren't those fabulous. cute? Yes. They're very hard to resist when you have an opportunity to get these and um, um, you know the first pair that we ever purchased was probably like 25 years ago and those in those days they were even harder to get but look at this little nightcap oh I mean isn't that it looks like little Miss Tuffet yeah yeah it is so sweet I mean it's a little nightcap she has all the whites that you could want and expect to have but this is also to a nice little piece this is a little hair ornament basically like um um, you know, uh, uh, oh, I forget what they call them, that you headband. put in, headband, mm -hmm. thank you, headband. So this is a little headband because in the 19th century, you would not be seen in public without something in your hair. So if you didn't have a hat, you would have something, you'd have a ribbon, you'd have some bows, you'd have some, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was, um, it has a, a religious significance. Um, France was a Catholic country. You do not, a woman does not go out of her, the house without something on her head because it, it honored the Virgin Mary. So it's a must. And even to give you an example of that, uh, Nancy Ann Abbott, the founder of um, the Storybook Doll Company was Catholic. And you will never find a Storybook Doll without some ornamentation in the hair. Mm -hmm. And that was probably one of the, hmm. what let's say the second most successful doll companies, maybe third ever. ever. So, um, you know, they're, so pretty much all of the ensembles have to have something to some kind of headgear, hats, um, ribbons, and that's why you'll find in a lot of doll trunks with original clothes, you'll find various uh, pieces of ribbon because that was for the hair decoration. But that let's so look, at this, look at this. Um, you were just gonna say, Look at this trunk. The trunk is wonderful. It's all padded and for her to get in it and be comfy. Um, 
and she can actually fit in this trunk. Um, do not think that it was always mandatory that the doll had to fit in the trunk. They, it did not. It, you could have a trunk that only the clothes fit in and the doll would travel separately. Um, but this one is a beautiful dress. It's kind of a, a steel, I think like a polished steel color with uh, Chantilly lace and the ribbon work and then all of this cutting, which they had wonderful machines to do this. But if you see how they took the little ribbon and made little tabs, almost like little ermine tails. You don't see it at first, but it's, it's the wonderful accents. The extra step mm -hmm. they took everywhere. Yes. And it's interesting that, you know, almost all of her dresses have gathered um, the skirts to the tops were all, you know, um, knife pleat, little tiny, little tiny gathers. Uh, cartridge pleats is one of the word I'm trying to find. That's not always. Sometimes they're box plate, box pleats inverted. But this group, whoever chose these things, that must have been their preference. And let me tell you that it is not easy to get 40 inches of fabric in a seven and a half inch waist. Mm -hmm. So they really were yeah. highly skilled. And also to this piping is just, you know, mind blowing because it's tiny. It's so beautifully and done. Then, and so then she tiny. of course has her little her veil, her, her shawl that's certainly not going to keep her warm, but it just creates it just a lovely gorgeous. look. And this she could wear for an evening event. Um, and, oh. and this also Love could it. be, you know, for semi uh, in, in some, we'd have to look up what, what phase of mourning this would be. But this was probably for part of mourning because children had to be prepared for that in the 1860s. Right. Just, it mm -hmm. was a fact of life. Now today, that's unusual for any of us to have to think about, but that was a very common um, thing at that time, the preciousness of life. And then let me show you this beautiful piece too. I mean, look at the, look at the trim, which they've yeah. encased it with a ribbon. I mean, the sewing is phenomenal. Speaking of sewing, Cheryl Williams just hopped on our live feed. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> well, we miss you. It's not the same yes, without you. It's not the same without you. But, <laughs> but I'm going to do the best here. I can. Yes. But this is a wonderful, uh, just a wonderful piece. Oh, just and, love this you know, it's just, it's, this is a suit and it's um, silk. It's very similar to um, the weave of it, it's almost like our raw silk that we would have been popular in the 1960s, except it doesn't have the nubbies. Uh, so it was very refined, but it's a beautiful little suit. And she'd of course wear those blue shoes with it. And then you know what? She's gotta have, she's gotta be real. You know, she's living in, it's cold right now in Paris. So in the 1860s, <laughs> Just I think to wear it, her was, long underwear. it was colder. So this is some incredible, I mean, okay, it's not the most exciting, uh, item that she has, but this is incredible. It work. is beautiful. I mean, I would give anything to be able to do that kind of um, that kind of work. It's just super. And this, she would use this. This would be an underpiece when it was cold. And then she has all her pantalettes, and then she has her chemise, and then her, which we've really been trying to teach Love people. The work. This Wonderful. is a one piece slip. Girls did not have two pieces. This is a one piece Gorgeous. and what makes this very special is it's still marked. So Look at that. We're going to get in close get so in everyone close. can mm -hmm. see that. This is an original real Hure marked slip. That's what it looks like everybody. That's what it looks like and if if the people that are like say okay let's put these two together. Now if you were a clean freak and you had to clean everything you would launder these. And when you laundered this piece, the, the mark would be dissolved, mm -hmm. never to be seen again. And not, you know, this is not for sale, but you would have just devalued this mm -hmm. by How many? mega, mon mega right. money. Because on honestly, as far as the value of these things go, it's really between 
the seller and the buyer what they want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Because you really can't say, oh, that's worth da 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 da. Yeah. It isn't. Because, because if you need one, if yeah, you're a hearing yeah. collector you're, and you you're, need and one, and there's two collector, of them, yeah. Yeah. And if, if there's two of them uh, for sale, I want both of them. Right, exactly. So that, you know, <laughs> and um, so, you know, it's really important to really, and sometimes too, even in our own collection, I have to stop and examine things because I forget. And I go, oh, wow, I didn't know that was a marked piece. So that's kind of a neat thing to do. But don't overwash things. Yes, do not overwash. That is a, no, no. That is a rule for and many. The, We're gonna and, um, show this yeah, isn't back she of the green? dress. She's just phenomenal. And then I want to oh, she has got so many pairs of shoes, it's, it's, it's blowing my mind. Look at these. She's an Imelda Marcos. She kind of is. <laughs> but look at these. These are fabulous. I mean, oh, that's, so that's for uh, when, it, when it's uh, muddy outside. Yeah, yeah. And they lace up the side. And they're marked. And it's, um, it's really kind of like a wool silk blend. I couldn't actually tell you what kind of fabric it is. There's the but, hearing mark. And there's everybody. the hearing mark. So she would wear this probably with her lavender outfit, I would imagine. But really, Lovely. and then of course you had to know how to write letters. So she's got her papeterie, and it's got all of her oh, beautiful yeah. things in. And you know, uh, we all love these, you know, collecting these kinds of things. And what I love about one of her plumes, that's a parrot feather. So that's probably from, um, actually from a Mexican parrot, which are, you know, very talkative. And, you know, they exported those parrots all over the world. So, you know, one of them found its way to, um, but I believe that her things are engraved, embossed for Emily, but this is a wonderful color Absolutely of green. Absolutely divine. And then of course she shopped at Poupe Model because that's a Poupe Model handkerchief. Um, and then look at this piece. This is just exquisite. That. Wow. And I would imagine that she would wear this piece with her uh, blue and cream silk suit and just really amazing gorgeous amazing um you know we've had people ask us in the past through your presentations can i do this is it possible to learn to do this mm -hmm. and the, the the answer to the question is yes you can if you're devoted to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think that I have permission from a, a friend of ours who's created a phenomenal uh, wardrobe of clothes that we're gonna share that next to show the audience that you can do this. Now the, the, the secret to it is you have to devote your time right. to it and try to get better Work at hard. it mm -hmm. and uh, practice. But I think that's gonna be our next segment because I think it'll be very interesting for the viewers to see that you can do this. Yes, yes it's that's not gonna easy. be very inspiring for a lot and, of people um, that are watching this that, that would like to learn and, and get there. And one of, our, one of our um, uh, studio audience members um, said, was, is sitting across the room and she said, I am so jealous of all of this, of, of Emily's things. And I said, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your jealousy? And she said, a 12. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I know a lot of uh, people that are tuning in are just um, hooray green with envy. Yes, yes. But, but and, the and, wonderful thing and about me having it is sharing it. So. And, and, that's, and, and we have to thank uh, Denise Beesey for that because she said, I, that's why she loaned uh, Emily here. And that's why she uh, agreed to, to allow this to happen today because she felt she should be shared. Here is a wonderful, this is a Hure parasol. How do we know it's a Hure parasol? They were at the forefront of metal workers, and this is actually metal. This wow. is metal. So it's metal, and it was originally painted to look like ivory. And, and then they put these little uh, decorations on it. Now, then it was orange shellac to, to protect the paint, which then turns it this color over a period of time. But this is an official Hure parasol. Wonderful. They're not the most uh, gorgeous um, handles and whatnot, but they really are lovely. Um, you know, their their choice of fringes and things. Um, and she does have other parasols that have 
the um, bone or ivory handles. She's got actually five of them. And um, so it's, it's neat to see. Um, yeah, and, then, and I guess we've got it live. <laughs> A couple of our audience members are watching it they're live watching on their Facebook live. feeds, but <laughs> they're actually sitting right here, ladies. Yeah. So well, they can get they up. They just tuned in. They can get up and walk over and look. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um, um, I mean, this is a wonderful example. And you know what? If you have talent and you want to take the time and learn how to recover these, which is, is difficult to do, but it's doable, there's a whole world of these waiting for you to restore them. You know, it's, it's, um, that's good. Yes. And yeah. that is good. If you, if, if you, if you feel the need to do that. Um, but anyways, Emily has all of her little games and her little toys and, um, you know, it's, it's she's just fun to have here and we're going to miss her where, while she's gone, but I can always watch the video, can't I? You can watch yeah. the video. Yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video, please share it with all of your doll friends across the world so they can see it on your page and uh, in their feeds and, and enjoy it too. Michael, thank you so thank you, much. Rachel. And thank you, Denise BC, for sharing your wonderful Hure and her fabulous trousseau. We got a really close look up at those Hure marks and we got a close look at her face. We got to see these fabulous things up close and personal. What a treat. Thank you. What a treat. So stay tuned. Bye bye, Ruby. We have, we have more coming more for coming. you. See you in bye a minute. Bye bye. bye, -bye.